Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy. Today I'm here to share part two of my very, very, very large book haul that really, really shouldn't have happened. All of the books from today's haul will be historical fiction, which is one of my favorite genres that I just haven't been reading a whole lot of lately. Hence why I think I felt the need to buy all of these historical fiction books. But I did get some really good deals. If you didn't see part one of this book haul, which has all other genres in it, I will link it up here for you guys if you want to check it out and haven't seen it. But if you guys are interested in seeing the books that I picked up, I have quite a variety as far as countries where they take place and time periods and decades and all of that, then go ahead and keep watching. There is no particular order to these books. I have not organized them very well. They're just stacked up here. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first on the list is Mistress of Mourning by Karen Harper. This is about a woman named Ver Verena who has been hired by uh, Queen Elizabeth of York, uh, which is King Henry the Seventh wife and she has hired Marina to make these wax figures of the two infants that she lost and the two younger brothers of hers from many years before who went missing and were never found and during this process uh, Verena is being overseen by Nicholas Sutton who is this man very closely connected to the crown and just making sure that everything's going well and then during this time Pri Prince Arthur the heir to the throne has been has passed away and Queen Elizabeth is not convinced that there was not foul, foul play involved. Let's see if I can talk. And so she sends Verena and Nicholas to go find out what happened. I love the Tudor time period. I think it's very fascinating. King Henry VIII has always been super interesting to me. So I'm excited to kind of see what role he plays in this, especially with him being a young child when all of this happened. So that's the first one for you guys. The next one happens in the post Civil War era very shortly after the Civil War occurred, and that is Jesse's Highway by Barbara Miller. And Jesse is working as a guard at a prison where I believe they had Confederate prisoners, and he is under strict orders that if there's ever any foul play or mob type things happening just to shoot into the crowd. And when he does so, he ends up killing a man who has a family Bible on him with the name Bodine. So he goes to tell the family what happened and how sorry he is. And upon doing so, he develops a relationship with his family. And it sounds like he develops a interest and relationship with their daughter and just cannot bring himself to tell them what actually happened. And this is his story. It sounds really amazing. This is totally up my alley and I'm really looking forward to this one. The next one I picked up from Barnes & Noble, and I'll be honest, the cover totally drew me in, and that is The House of Velvet and Glass by Katherine Howe. And this is about a girl named Sybil who lost her mother and sister to the Titanic sinking and she is trying to take care of her brother who gets caught up in a not so great crowd and with a woman who seems to be influencing him. So she calls upon a psychology professor that she knows that there used to be some sexual tension it sounds like uh, and to help her find them and it just sounds really interesting. I haven't read a lot about this time period especially in the US so I'm really really looking forward to this one and I just thought the cover was stunning. Uh, this next one is one that it generally I would not pick up for myself, but I bought it for my husband because it was our anniversary earlier this month. And that is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. Towels. I'm not sure I should have done my research. Um, this is a new release about a count in the 1920s. Let me double check. Yes. Who is under house arrest because they don't think he's repentant. This tribe, this council doesn't think he's repentant for whatever had happened, happened. And so he's under house arrest at a famous hotel that is right across the street from the Kremlin. And he befriends people in the hotel and he's watching all of this very political, tense time in Russia um, from this hotel. And somehow his decisions end up affecting a young girl and what will happen to her and so this just sounds absolutely amazing and the cover is gorgeous. So there's one about Russia and I've read almost nothing about Russia and would like to so that'll be a good place to start. Uh, I have another one about King Louis the 14th, so the sun god of France, and that is The Shadow Queen by Sandra Galland. And this is about a girl named Claudette whose mother is in a traveling group of players or thespians or however you want to say. She's an actress and 
in doing so, her mother becomes very popular and she, Claudette, is offered the opportunity to be a personal attendant and confidant to the Shadow Queen who is King Louis XIV's mistress. And that just sounds super cool. I'm really excited to read this one. Another book that I got for a killer deal at 50 cents is Written on the Wind by Judith Pella. This is book one of Daughters of Fortune series and this Judith Pella is the one who wrote The Russians which is a very popular historical fiction series that I do really want to read but just haven't gotten around to pick up pick it up. And this takes place during World War II, about three daughters um, of this newspaper tycoon. The oldest is a journalist and ends up being sent to Europe during World War II to report on what's going on over there. The middle daughter is a fledgling actress in Hollywood and the third is a freshman at UCLA. And I've been really into World War II historical fiction so I'm excited for this one as well. And speaking of Russia, I got The Kitchen Boy, a novel of the last Tsar by Robert Alexander. And this is a book that just talks about what happened to the Romanovs and the fall of, I don't know if you would call it the Russian monarchy. I don't know the proper terminology. Like I said, I don't know anything about Russian history, but it talks about that from the point of view of The Kitchen Boy. And I'm really excited to read this one. And it just looks really short. So a great place to just kind of begin and start to learn about Russia. And like I mentioned in the previous haul video, Barnes & Noble is so very good at putting stickers in the worst possible places and I got a second book of the Passing Bells trilogy, Circle of Times. This book is compared to Downton Abbey, which I haven't watched, um, but it just sounded interesting. I don't remember what the back says and would like to keep it that way because I would like to pick up the first book because if I pick this one up, I'm assuming I would pick up the first one. So got that one, of course, being the second book in the series. Uh, the Widow of the South by Robert Hicks. This is based on a true story as well, which always, always piques my interest. And this is about a woman who on her property, the Battle of Franklin occurred, which was apparently a very, very terrible, bloody battle during the Civil War, as there were many. And she ends up essentially running a confederate hospital on her plantation and in doing so she meets a wounded soldier and a love develops between the two of them which is shocking to her because she never thought she'd love anyone again and this just sounds wonderful to me i used to read a lot more about the civil war and for whatever reason kind of strayed away from it but i'm excited to get back into it the next book that i have here is the gallery of vanishing husbands by natasha solomons and this is about a woman named juliet montague which is very interesting if you know anything about shakespeare and she is living in a Jewish community where women are not allowed to divorce their husbands, only husbands can divorce their wives, and her husband went missing seven years prior and was never found, so technically she is still married, uh, and she is a single mom, and this book takes place in the late 1950s, and around her 30th birthday she is offered, or she is asked if she's willing to be a model for this painter, and she agrees to do so, and it kind of changes her life a little bit and brings her into a different community, and she decides to find out what happened to her husband, so so that she can move on with her life. And another one, I generally don't like books that have like people on the front, but I think this one's really pretty. And another book with a person on the cover that actually drew me in, weirdly enough, is The Pindar Diamond by Katie Hickman. And this takes place in Italy. I don't know if it says when but it's definitely historical. And a woman uh, washes up on shore with an infant who is crippled and mute and is, uh, her, she is believed that she gave birth, or this child that she has is a mermaid. So this small town where she washes up doesn't want her there. They think she's bad luck. And so they pay a group of traveling um, acrobats to take her elsewhere. And at the same time in Venice, there is this very successful merchant, yes, who is gambling his fortune away, which is totally unlike him and going on and on about his lost love. And when the Pindar diamond shows up in Venice, he, his name is Paul. He decides to change his fortune and look for his love and this just sounds like a great mystery and so fascinating and so excited for this one. And this is a book that I have heard both Mercedes from Mercedes Bookish Musings and Simon from Savage Reads talk about and both of them 
absolutely loved it. I've never read a book about it because, or similar to this, because I've not ever read a LGBTQ plus book. I, they've, I've read books that have them as like side plots and side stories, but never have that being the main focus. So I'm really excited to read that. And that is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. I believe this book has been long listed for the Man Booker Prize. And this is a story about two soldiers during the Civil War. One is Irish and one is an American. And they end up developing a relationship. And there's also a Sue, a young Sue girl involved. And both Simon and Mercedes have gushed about this book. I'm really excited to read it, although I've got to be honest, I do like the UK cover better, but I found this for only $5 at my used bookstore and just, I mean, you can't beat that. I am not going to describe this book to anyone because yet another book that I think everyone has read but me, and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Susack. I got this book for a killer deal and it actually does sound really interesting. I had no idea that it was narrated by death, so I'm really excited about that and it's World War II, which like I said, I've been super interested in, assuming there's book thievery involved. That's about all that I know. That's about all that I want to know and I really hope to get to this one soon. And like I said, a wide variety of time periods. This next book takes place in the 60s and that is Finn and Lady by Kathleen Shine. I actually hauled another book of hers in my first haul. Um, not my first haul, but the part one of this haul, um, which is a retelling of Sense and Sensibility. And this is the story about Finn, who's about 11 years old when his parents die. And so his older sister, who he hasn't seen in six years, becomes his legal, legal guardian. And so he moves from Connecticut to Greenwich Village in the 60s. And it's just about their relationship and taking care of one another. And it just sounded like a really good read. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. Have I said that about every book? Pretty sure I've said that about every book. And the last book on my list is yet another book with two storylines, and that is The Secret Life of Violet Grant by Beatriz Williams. The first storyline takes place in the mid-60s. Uh, this girl just recently graduated from college and ends up going down a path that her parents don't really want her to go down, and she discovers that there is this aunt that she's never heard about that had committed a crime of passion, and so she delves into what exactly happened and who this woman was, and then the previous the second timeline takes place in 1914 and it's Violet Grant, the aunt who committed the crime of passion and she is unhappy in her marriage to an older professor and she meets up, she meets a former student of his and I believe a love affair begins and this just sounded really interesting and again the cover drew me in. So there you have it guys. There are all the historical fiction books that I picked up recently. Let me know if any of them sound interesting to you or like I said in the other video, you're interested in buddy reading with me. I'd love to buddy read with some of you guys. So if you like this video, please like it. And if you loved it, please subscribe and we'll see you in my next video. Happy reading. You know, all with this uh, book haul is also during your book ban. I have a book band. What was it? Nothing. What did you get? No, you're not going to mention that.